Is it the 11th? That's oh, what yeah. my computer says. Oh, man. <laughs> Listen, I am a day behind. October 11th, 2023, joint meeting with the Finance Committee. All yeah. right. Now call the Finance Committee meeting to order for 5.04 p.m. on October 11th, 2023. Carolyn, you wanted to start with an announcement about yes. mosquitoes. Yes, thank right? you. Um, we had a positive mosquito today tested in, with West Nile disease in Old Deerfield behind the visitor center. Um, so it's in, late in the season. So we will have less mosquitoes very shortly. But in the meantime, uh, mosquito <laughs> repellent, long sleeves, long pants will protect you. So if you have any questions, um, you can go on the website. We will be posting um, all kinds of information from DPH on West Nile disease. If you become sick with West Nile disease, it's similar to um, a cold. So cold symptoms. So it's not, um, except for someone that's really autoimmune compromised, it's really not as serious as it sounds. Okay, but it's still protect yourself from mosquitoes. Thank you. Is that Old Deerfield or South? No, Old Deerfield. Okay. All right, so we have um, minutes to approve from our previous meeting. Anybody like to make a motion? I move that we approve the minutes of uh, the October the 3rd meeting. Second. All right, any discussion? No discussion, all right. Um, we'll do roll call vote. Um, David Sharp. Dave Sharp, aye. Mark Brennan. Mark Brennan, aye. Sheila Chalfin, I. Jim Camby. James Camby is I. All right. That passes unanimously. Um, so we're going to do, so the only other thing to do is to go through the rest of the, the um, town meeting warrant. Um, we're going to do it a little bit out of order. We're going to do the money-related stuff first so that Brenda can take off. Um, and we're going to start with the select board has asked us to go back and look at the um, the borrowing for the highway repairs again. So on the new copy of the warrant, that would be Article 10. Um, so you guys want to give us an update of what you talked about at your last meeting? Yes. Um, I, I, the reason why the select board is proposing up to $5 million, and I say that proposing because obviously unless we had to, we wouldn't borrow. Um, we are anticipating from the state at some point, some money to reimburse us for our losses, which are about $2 million right now. Um, however, there are roads that are not open like Hoosick. Um, and then we have River Road and Little Meadow Road that we haven't done anything to yet. Um, River Road is about 3,200 feet and really, it's, it's complicated because it's next to the Connecticut River. Um, water is sheeting off the hillside there and um, in amounts that the road was not designed to um, withstand. And so that's why it's failing. Not this weekend, but the weekend before when we had three inches of rain, it literally dropped a foot. And we were really worried about this past weekend. And even with just light showers, we had a couple inch drop. Kevin has been really great about going out and measuring how much it drops every time we have a little bit of rain. But at some point, we're going to have to close the road because it will fail. Uh, our intention Can was... Say, what is it that's dropping? It's it's the whole in that area, literally the base has um, undermined. And uh, the which waters, area of River Road? Pardon me? Which, which area are we talking about? Is about 3,200 feet. Is it 507? Yeah, it's 17 500. Area. Yeah. Right. Okay. There's cones there. Yeah. And, but uh, my intention was to apply for a mass works project like we did at the beginning of River Road a few years ago. Mm -hmm. And, um, but even if we got the grant, it's 18 to 24 months out. Uh, I am I am really worried that it won't go through the winter. Um, if it fails, we have to have the ability to fix it. Um, 
and it's complicated because we have to get, get an Army Corps engineer permit. We have to natural heritage permits. You know, there's all kinds of permitting that we have to go through. And, uh, you know, well, it depends. If we have a big rainstorm, we can declare an emergency and you can shortcut some of that expense. But the, you can't, you have to go out to bid. You have to do all that stuff. And ultimately, if we really want to fix it, it's complicated. We have to have an engineering solution where that water is coming down. Um, and so it's just not a case of dumping rock. Yep. So in realistically, I've been doing this for a long time. It's a, at least a $2 million project. So if you look at the money we've already spent, and what we are anticipating, we have a town meeting coming up and that's why we're asking it's on the warrant and then we have to post and have an election. So if we don't get the money from the state in that time frame for what we've expended, then we do have to borrow. And it, I would like us to have the capability if River Road does fail to be able to go out and fix it you know, go out to bed and fix it. Uh, it's a major artery. It would be a major inconvenience for people to have it closed for quite a long time. And so it would be something that we have to do right away. And if it gets to a certain point, if it keeps dropping and it gets to a certain point, we'll have to close it anyway. But at that point, we would have to go through the whole rigmarole of bidding and all that, and it will be slow. But to have to have a call a town meeting, then have to have an election just for that project, it just doesn't make sense. This is really, if we're if we're having a setting up an election to bar, to borrow the two million, which I hope we don't have to, we can cancel it because it would be scheduled in December, and the timeline that I have been told is they hope to have something on the governor's desk by Thanksgiving, but I. I don't know if Tim has had any other conversations, but I have not been able to nail down a number that we were going to get. I would feel much better if I knew we were going to get three or four million or five million. I'm asking for five million because we have expenses that we haven't incurred yet. We're trying to slow everything down as much as possible so that we have a little bit of time. But we are also under emergency orders. We've the DEP has actually been really good. They've extended, which is unheard of, our emergency order for Wapping Road twice. Um, they've been really accommodating. And that's, uh, I don't want to say that they haven't cooperated with us, but the fact is that they are they are really doing a lot for to work with us because they know we're pretty stressed out on how to manage this. So if you have any questions, I'd be glad to answer them. Go ahead, Brenda. So, um, excuse me. <laughs> Kevin sent out a spreadsheet um, shortly before the meeting. Uh, we have spent a uh, million one hundred thousand so far. It looks now he's done some uh, manual calculations at the bottom. It looks like he's already contracted with Warner Brothers for another two hundred eight thousand, and then he's got another number down here for a million three. So it looks like he's committed to two point six at this point. I, that's what it appears to me. Um, I didn't get a chance to ask him, but that looks like what it is so far. Uh, that sort of, I mean, I, I'm not a hundred percent sure of all the figures that we have, but I know we've, in my mind, it's been about two and a half million that we have outstanding. So that that's the same. Yep. Right. And so if you take that two and a half million and then you add in potentially River Road, that's why we're, we're coming up with five. Do you know, um, for River Road, is it the water coming down the hill or is the river changing its course a little bit? Well, right there and getting it's a little bit of road? both. Um, when when we had um, similar situation in the beginning, uh, the July 10th storms were actually the rivers were high. Um, the Connecticut River had come up and undermined. But it's only the Connecticut River for most of the time does not really caused as much trouble because it's not doesn't get over its banks on a regular basis this summer has but been the course unused. is staying fairly true it's not 
Right. Like no rivers no, but move. What, what, what over happens time, when it comes so. over its banks? This is one of the yeah. areas that the water it tends to flood. Flood. In. Yeah. Okay. So July 10th and July 16th storms, those were caused by the rivers being very high mm -hmm. um, because water, all the watershed north of the Connecticut um, had the rivers, you know, at flood exactly. stage. Right. The July 21st storm was was really just, you know, over Conway and Deerfield. That, and, and it was just very intense. It was eight inches of rain in 52 minutes or something like that. And because of that, um, that was coming off the fields above it. And there's no, there's no solution for that water. There's just so much new, you know, more water coming off the hillside than ever before. That's just related to intense events that we're having. And, and this the was intended repairs would include engineering solution to dealing with the water coming down. Right. So this, that's why it's not as simple as just getting someone to dump some rocks and stabilize the base of this road. It's because you're not dealing with the water when it comes down. It has to go through the road somehow. Mm -hmm. And there just isn't a system there. Alerts and stuff. That we yeah. Run. One of the other elements of this is that um, in the area we're talking about, there's a lot of, as in Deerfield all over, there's a lot of ravines. Mm -hmm. And um, when the water sheeting over the road in one particular area where the cones are, a bunch of trees were undermined and fell over and blocked the road and then were cut back. And it's a 60 or 70 foot drop into this ravine. And it's um, so when... Carolyn mentions filling with with riprap or big stone. You know, you're talking it's a, a not fun. insubstantial <laughs> yeah. uh, ravine, and um, so it's it's a potential solution. It's something that um, was suggested by the um, what was the EWP folks, emergency watershed, watershed protection, but um, they talked about putting in large rocks at the base and building up something essentially like what they're doing along the Connecticut at Route 2 where there was undermining um, and you know <clears throat> so we're in the situation of trying to anticipate well what if what if I mean there's two ways to look at it you could say we're anticipating a catastrophic failure that hasn't occurred and of course if that happened it would be under an emergency situation the thing is if it happened now we borrow money we, we'd incur debt now before the annual town meeting and we'd be in a position of having even less time to consider how much money we're going to ask for um before we'd have to pay for it i don't think would we get another year um for for this no, emergency still, if, if it, or it would be considered the the fiscal year it's a fiscal year so, we only are allowed to the deficit spend till june 30th so i mean you we could look we could ask for a smaller amount uh, now and then if we had a catastrophic failure ask for another amount um you know so it's I we're guess... not we're not going to do it unless we have to because we we do want to go through some kind of program um we we've always done that in the repairs in the past but quite honestly it's you know you're talking about two three five-year period before we get all these roads back to where they are. They are temporarily fixed. The, the the amount of money that we're talking about here that we've already spent is temporary. I mean, the Pine Nook Road has not been solved. All that water is still down by the trestles with nowhere to go. And that if we had another bad rainstorm, it's going to wash out, you know, that lower, whole lower area still and be end up at Richardson's Candy Kitchen. That needs to have an engineering solution. We have three grant options that we're pursuing on that. So we're not coming to ask for money for that kind of fix because it's fixed enough to get through the winter, hopefully, and we won't have any more events. But, you know, Hoosick Road's not done. Um, and like I said, River, you know, Little Meadow Road. We're just, you know, we're not going to do anything for it, truthfully, until we get a grant. Um, so it's just because there's no traffic. It's not critical to anything. That's the one between Deerfield Academy and the sewer treatment plant. Mm -hmm. um, 
it's undermined and our sewer line is threatened, but it it's stable enough. It should be okay. So that we're not gonna, I'm not coming to borrow money to do that kind of a project. It's just that River Road is a critical artery and you know, a lot of people use it every day. And to have that shut down is is a serious. We have to be able to get on it. And we don't know when it's gonna fail. It's on the it's on the way to failure. It's just we have to do something before winter. So we're allowed to deficit spend for road repairs. And then we get, can you explain that process, Brenda? So we're allowed to deficit spend because we requested emergency spending authorization from the state. So they've allowed us to deficit spend for the emergency that was created by the storms that we had this summer. And uh, we had to specify an amount. So the amount specified was up to, I believe, 4.7 million, right? I can't remember exactly, but we did request that of the state. They did approve it, um, but it needs to be covered by the time we get to the end of the fiscal year. The the um, issue more so right now is just a cash cash flow issue until we can get tax money coming in. So when we say we deficit spend, where does the money come from that is <laughs> spent before? Our, our cash accounts, which are depleting quickly. Yeah. So we like people's salaries and everything else that we pay would normally come from those accounts. Any of and the commingled accounts. That. So there's many special revenue funds that are all just commingled with the with the town funds. So we're really kind of kind of half borrowing from some of those other funds right now just to be able to pay the bills. Okay. And I think that's part of the reasoning behind trying to get the tax bills and the tax rate set early so we could put <laughs> bills out before. Um, and and it's, we've, dis, we've had discussions about trying to do what other communities do, which is, you know, put out the tax bills in a timely fashion, but say, you know, if the tax rate changes, we're gonna have a, a makeup in the spring payment. The second payment will right, be higher. Which, which to me makes perfect sense, but, um, you know, other people may have different opinion about it. I it would address the whole question of cash flow, you know, because you can't you can't take in cash until you put out the bills. Okay. But if you could put a bill out and then make an adjustment, then it might solve some of that problem. Not all of it, not 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 the emergency situation we're facing, but yeah. Well, that I mean, we had we are encouraging everybody to figure out how to do that for next year. Yeah. So I mean, you have to do you can't do it like immediately. So no. it has to be a year's warning. So. Well, we're going to figure that out um, just so we don't have cash flow issues in the future. Because it seems like it's harder and harder to get our tax bills out on time. Not, you know, to be fair, Patriot, you know, there's a few places for the assessors to have. Patriot is one of the few contractors for, you know, set, that helps set the bills, so. Yeah, and, I, and Brenda, just if you could explain this, um, part of this is if we if we approve this at this meeting, then we could do a ban to a certain amount, and then and then bond bond an actual borrowing if it, if we don't get anything from the state. Right. I I guess um, the way I saw this happening is if if this does get approved by the town and it's debt excluded, um, that would allow us to borrow on on a temporary basis. So I would think that we'd take out a ban for a year or less than a year, and and cover our costs. And then when that ban came due, if we got money from the state, then it would be applied against that, and the remaining balance would be what we'd either continue to borrow short term for or to bond for depending on how much that is i i'm i've done this enough i mean the the problem is the damage has been so unprecedented this is worse than irene um that it, it's it's a staggering amount of money and but we we've done this enough in the past that the state has come through to us for us always so I, I'm anticipating us getting the money. It's just that these projects with River Road hanging over our head is just such, you know, a large magnitude that 
we just have to do this. This is not something that we can just move money around for a couple months and keep our fingers crossed that, you know, somebody's going to get something to us pretty soon. I, I don't think it's a problem. We will get some money, but it's, you know, I don't have, a, I don't feel comfortable saying that we're going to get the four or $5 million that we hope to get. Um, we'll get something towards it, but I'm not sure if that's enough to cover River Road. And that's what my concern is. So the, I mean, the select board was talking between four and 5 million. And um, I think that the argument for the, for the 5 million figure was that um, for every, is it a, if you have to rebuild a road, it's like a hundred thousand of a linear Four. foot. Yeah. And with 3,200 feet, we're coming in, you know, at a, approximately $3 million. Um, now all of it may not fail, but certainly if parts of it fail and in two or three different places, then you're es essentially rebuilding the whole road anyway, um, because it makes more sense to do that. But um, so, uh, you know, partly it's what do we think is the finance committee and the select board makes the most sense to ask the voters to 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 do. Um, it is a two step process, right? So we ask them for authorization, and then we have an election to say yes, we can do this. So they get two opportunities to say yes or no. Um, and we can cancel the election. I mean, if we get money from the state, then we wouldn't go through with the election in December because we, there would be no need. But if we only got say 3 million from the state and, and we, we had, had 5 million of repairs. Right. And we still have the ability to go and get borrow money. So if, and just a procedural question. So if at town meeting 5 million was approved and then it was later decided that only 2 million was needed or something, can you, can the election be for just 2 million or does it have to be the same as was? I, I don't know the answer to that for sure. Maybe Casey knows, but I, my understanding of it is that the election has to be for exactly what the request what was, was in the, uh, uh, at town, town meeting. meeting. Yeah. Okay. And obviously, if we're not going to use the money, if we get the money from the state, we would want to cancel it so it's not against us via our rating. Um, if you don't borrow all of that, you can always rescind that borrowing authority at the next town meeting. Um, right. Which I would, yeah, we would need to do that. Um, I would still think that we're still going to be borrowing some. Hopefully not, but yeah. I, you know, in the past, we've, like I said, we've done all the repair work with grant work and, and money from the state, so... Can I say that we're not going to be using tax, you know, our taxpayer money? You know, I would hope not. But this River Road is really a tricky situation. And that's, and I had hoped that we would go through the winter, but I, I just, I'm not sure anymore. Well, I so think I just, it's not so much winter as spring. That's why I thought. Well, it depends. If, if we have a warm winter, it's a higher anticipation of precipitation this winter. If, if it's warm enough that we have rain and the ground is not frozen, then the water won't be sheeting off. It will be going into the ground and it will yeah. over time. But if it's a snowpack, the snowpack will melt in a relatively short period of time and then we'll have some more problems. So, I mean, the, who can predict really other than it's going to be not a pleasant winter and we'll probably have more bills for salt and sand. So... I don't so know. just for thought and discussion purposes, if you I've shared my screen here, so if we borrow $5 million, guess an, S, an interest rate of 6% for 20 years, um, Alex, for 20 years, that's essentially $400,000, 435 per year in payments, which would start in FY25. So if we do what we did, when we were talking about the library last year, um, our average single family home now updated for, for this year's three, $359,661. So if you look at the tax bill, um, 
that would be $178 a year for the average single family house. And then you can kind of scroll up and down that visually and see where your house falls, but just to understand what the impact is of borrowing $5 million. So that, that would be an increase to our tax bill. Um, our tax rate for right now is 14.97. So that would be a 3%, 3.2% increase to our tax rate. Now the hope is that we don't borrow that five, full 5 million and, and whatever, but just so that we understand the, the scope of what we're recommending and discussing. Um, <clears throat> any questions on that? Okay, so I'll and, stop sharing that. And the, the, the thought is that this would be, we would do this election to debt exclude. Yes. This. So, right. So this would be debt excluded. So this would be on top of everything else. Everything else. Yeah. yeah. So in addition to whatever, whatever um, valuation increase there is over all the property and all the other things that go into this, this would be an additional amount there. Right. So. Um, does anybody on finance committee have a suggestion or discussion? So, um, and y'all weren't here at the finance committee last week when we discussed it last time. So the rationale behind, this is my memory, the rationale behind the 2 million recommendation from the finance committee was that there, there's sort of two problems. One is that we have all these repairs and it's gonna be $5 million worth of work. The other problem though, is the cash flow problem. So if we were to borrow 2 million, that this is my memory of the discussion. If we borrow 2 million now and approve 2 million, that would get us past the cash flow problem. And then if the repairs ended up being more than that, or we got nothing from the state or whatever, then in spring town meeting, we could then go back and ask again to borrow the remainder that we needed to borrow. Um, the, uh, I guess, advantages to that is that it's a lower dollar amount. So we might, I, I imagine we'll get people unhappy about borrowing. Roads seem like a pretty um, important thing to, to keep repaired, but um, we might get less pushback and have a, a better chance of having it pass at the the special meeting. I mean, the, the election. Um, but it means that the, the the disadvantage of that is you don't have the full borrowing authority. You may not be able to do the full scope of repairs and um, it has you going back two times in a row to request money for the same thing. So, I, um, yeah, basically. And I'll, also it, it confuses people because I, I think it's most important to be upfront. I mean, we don't really know if we need to do this, but you know, it, all the indications are that we we are going to have to, and so I just I think it's more trans transparent and more upfront with people that you know this is what we're stuck with. Yeah, so we were we were not uh, all of one mind on this the select like board. I mean, Trevor mentioned the four million figure. Carolyn was, you know, had more experience. Than, I have no experience of fixing a three hundred or three thirty two hundred 3,200 feet of a roadway. So I don't claim any knowledge. So I'm more or less deferring to the most experienced person in the highway department in supporting the $5 million figure. But I certainly understand the logic and the, the thought process that the finance committee went through in discussing what's the best strategy for, you know, um, solving the situation that we're confronted with. And, so we were just unclear about whether one suggestion was that the, the way the language is written, it doesn't have a figure in it. The finance committee recommends 2,000, 2 million and the select board recommends 5 million. Um, is, is that even a viable thing to do? Um, you know, I don't know. Well, the, what I think would happen is that it's a select board's warrant, right? Yeah. So it, it, this isn't like the, the, the budget that yeah. we do to annual town meeting right. is the finance committee's yeah. budget, right? Basically, right. Not select board, but this is it's the select board's warrant. So it's right. your article. So in in my opinion, the article, the motion would be for five million, right? And then if we felt strongly enough, 
we would make a motion to amend it to two million. You right. vote on that. If that passed, then that would be what would be voted or whatever. Right. Um, but that was the the process I was envisioning. Mm -hmm. um, right, because you can lower, but you can't go up. Um, as from what I understand in warrant items, is that correct, Brenda? Yes, that's correct. Uh, so, so, anybody on finance committee? Um, go ahead, Mark. Yeah, so um, I saw the same concern that I had last week. Um, my concern was that if we approved an arbitrary amount, that it could escalate, and it already escalated twenty percent since the last meeting that we had. So um, I wasn't aware that you know the select board was split on how much to ask for, but um, you know we knew <clears throat> with the data that we had at the time that there was two million in need and four million in potential uh, construction costs. So from my perspective, to hear that it goes up another twenty percent. Um, is uh, a little bit of a concern. The other concern that I had at the time was just around the precision of the dollar amount. Um, I am definitely in support of fixing River Road. Um, I'm the president of a, a nonprofit that happens to be on uh, River Road in the, the 700 range. So I'm intimately familiar with the road damage that's down there. And um, I also don't believe that, um, I think someone had said something about piling more rocks on the side uh, of the road. I don't, I don't think that's going to fix it. Um, I went around, I've, I've walked up and down it, not just driven, but walked up and down yeah. it several times. And I believe that it's going to need culverts. I believe that it's going to need uh, steel piles on the uh, river side of the road. And I just, my, my feeling is that I don't think that anyone here can come up with a number uh, without engineering. Uh, right. to, to figure out what that's going to be. Mm -hmm. So my thought was not not to say like, no, we shouldn't do this, but it's highly likely we're going to have to go to the well twice because I don't think four to five million is going to do it. And I would rather give the town the shot in the arm it needs now to pay for the expenses that are rolling in. And then during our normal budget cycle, between now and our normal bu budget, budget cycle, I mean, get the engineering that we need to get to figure out what it's really going to cost to make River Road last. Uh, with proper engineering and go for whatever's left at that point. Um, I I just, like I said, I, I I don't think that we know with enough precision to know that 4 million is the, the right number or 5 million is the right number, uh, considering the extensive damage that's there. And then also, um, I, I've spent a bunch of time on Hawks Road lately and have seen Hawks Road washing out into River Road and all the effects of that. So where I'm coming from and why I'm, you know, made this motion originally is that I I think that it would be silly to assume that, you know, we can just go get a bunch of money, pave it, maybe put some rocks down and and assume that, you know, um, this isn't going to happen again. Um, Hawks and a lot of the other roads that are on that section of River Road um, have dirt segments either for the road or there's a lot of dirt on the side and they don't have storm culverts. So all of that stuff just keeps washing into the road. And the water has to go over River Road to get to the river right now. It can't drain on the um, other side of the road um, and, and then under. Uh, it, it has to go over the road to get there. So I think that this is going to be like a really big engineering project. I think it's going to cost more than four or five million to do. And I would just want more precision in that number. So the problem is to go out and higher engineer you got to have cash for and most of your projects now permitting and engineering is about 40 percent or more of the project so and we need and i am saying i'm agreeing with you 100 percent that this is needs to be an engineered solution this is not just a dumping rock situation and even to stabilize it is not going to be i mean you're talking we need eight by eight rocks or giant amounts of rocks to stabilize the area so the thing is, by by not getting the money enough up front, we don't have the ability to move forward with whatever the solution is going to be, because uh, we will need to have more money. Mm -hmm. uh, we we know we've already spent in my like I said, I don't have the, the numbers exactly like Brenda, but we're only a couple hundred thousand off from what's in my head, which is we're already over two million. So mm -hmm. by just borrowing two million. We have no, there's no ability, we're already short. So, and and we haven't stabilized all the roads and we haven't finished, like Hoosick is still closed. We haven't done that yet. We're hoping that that will be done the week of Halloween and, and then we'll get the bill 
sometime in November. But I mean, by I know that the five sounds bad, but we have to have the ability to have, move forward to have money to do the engineering. We're not going to do a band aid on this. This is going to be an actual fix. So that's why we're talking about so much money because this will be an actual fix that we do not have to come back to. So if the, let, let's say that we do need to um, do a bunch of engineering work and five million is not enough, then then aren't we in the same position where we have to ask for money again? Yes, but we could come back and do that in the spring if we don't have enough or the state hasn't come through. I'm hoping at this point we have had, we will get money from the state. It's just that if River Road goes, I mean, it's, it's going faster than I anticipate. Right. It, I I was hoping we could get through the winter with what was been done and we would do a mass works project and it, it would be taken care of. But I I what's happening what, or what was so alarming to me when we had that not this past weekend, which thankfully it was downscaled, but the weekend before when we had three inches of rain, it dropped a whole foot. Mm -hmm. At and and even though we only had showers, it dropped a couple inches over the week this past weekend even though that was a hugely reduced amount of rain that, that was anticipated. So, I mean, is it going to fail? I don't know. It, when is it going to fail? I don't know. But I'm just saying it, it, it might be something really soon, and we need to have the ability to go out and get it fixed, and we need to have the ability to borrow the money to pay it when we... So um, if we were to do a special town meeting, what would be the soonest date we could do that to vote on whether or not we should debt exclude this election not or, or, uh, no, sorry that's what i meant yeah sorry yeah thank you well right now we would set it up for december so if it so if we do that in december and then we go and uh you know borrow how quickly could we actually get construction crews in like would we be able to get them in for december or january depends on the weather right and it depends on what I mean, I don't know what the solution is. That's why I'm saying it has to be an engineered solution. Yeah. Um, I, I I mean, I, I think that we're we're probably agreeing, but you know, the the finance yes. approach is a little different. I what what I would want to say: How far are we into the engineering process right now? Like, do we have any engineering going on in flight? Okay. No, we have not committed to anything. Yeah. So I, would we go ahead and get that going if this were approved? And the road hasn't failed yet. Would we go ahead and? and I'm start I'm still that trying process? to get um, it covered under the NRCS's EWP program, the Emergency Watershed Protection. The problem is that if the Connecticut had come up again, then it would been not a problem. Clear. Yeah. But this is water that's shedding off the mountainside, you know, the hillside, yeah. and that's that doesn't really qualify for, you know, a waterway kind of restoration protection don't worry i'm pushing it <laughs> but you know if so if if it qualifies under the ewp then their engineer it, engineering and permitting pretty much is covered and 75 percent of it is covered i don't but i but i've been trying to get this covered for a couple of years now we've had you know this was from july of 21 when we first had some of the issues with river road in that spot and it really didn't qualify. So I'm so I, I'm gonna say I'm not I don't want to disagree with what Carolyn's saying or anything, but I would like the finance committee and the select board to go into this meeting with pretty much in agreement about what we're doing. So I I'm I guess I'm sort of saying, is there if we have 2.6 million in, in anticipated expenses at this point? Is there a number above that that we can agree on that we're going to ask voters to do like $3 million? Because a catastrophic failure is a catastrophic failure, and it's something we're just going to have to respond to because yeah. it's a catastrophic failure. An engineered solution is a totally different thing where you actually consciously go out and make choices. And I, I don't know that by necessarily borrowing $5 million is going to get us to that engineered solution. So um, Let, Let's hold that thought for a minute. Yeah. Jim, you had your hand up earlier. So, yeah, well, it, it sort of relates to that, I guess. Um, it sounds, I mean, I'm sort of a, it's, Mark said this already, it sounds like we're going to be coming back in the spring to the town to ask for more money pretty much regardless. I mean, from what Brenda said, we've already basically spent 2.6 million, 
right? That well, Kevin this, has already expended don't. that. Yeah. So what's a reasonable amount of additional expenditures to expect by, I don't know, when would construction no longer be possible, really? January? Depends on the year, right? Yeah. Well, last year, the ground mm -hmm. didn't freeze. Yeah. And this year, we're going to get a lot of precipitation. That volcano that popped off put an absurd amount of rain in the ionosphere. So regardless of like where you fall in the climate change thing, everyone agrees that this is going to be a high precipitation year. It's just, is it going to be above 32 degrees in rain or is it going to be below and be snow? So I think it's fair to assume that, you know, um, this is going to be a sketchy year, but no one can really um, predict, you know, whether or not we're going to have, you know, strong El Nino pa patterns and, and whether or not the ground's um, going to freeze or not. Um, but even so, even even if the ground freezes, like if if we're not getting approval for this until December, like I don't see how you can mobilize construction crews until at least maybe March or April. Um, if 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 you can sooner than than fine, but I, I just I really wonder, like even if we get that money, what can we do with it? Um, you know, after December, like can we do anything in January or February? Well, we can do some I, I mean, so, so I mean the, if we, the second if half of my have sentence to was worry about this yeah. if oh, if sorry, the state sorry, comes yeah. comes yeah. true. Yeah. I mean, yeah, but I mean, the second half of my sentence was, you know, how much are we more are we likely to spend in the next few months, and maybe we should make that our benchmark. So part of the argument for borrowing now is that um, you can't start until you have approval for the funding. Um, so if we could start, you know, if the thing fails and we could start repairs in, in a, even like the day of town meeting, we wouldn't be able to do that until after we had well, town meeting I mean, and got it approved. Brenda mentioned, so. you know, we, that she's been dipping into coming with accounts to true. keep the a, yeah. operations. Yeah, going. that's true. And I was wondering how much more is likely to be spent on top of the 2.6 million we're already basically written checks for. Hard, hard to know, hard to know. I, I was just saying to Carolyn, you know, we, we have the authorization from DOR to overspend. Yeah, we still have to cover it. Yeah, that might um, But we some. have the authorization to overspend by 4.7 million. Um, what's to say we can't um, engage an engineer now while we're trying to figure out this borrowing and the debt exclusion so that we know what we're going to be facing down down the road and still get something here on our books for December. But I have a feeling that if, if we can engage that engineer now, we're going to be spending closer to that $4 million soon so that we know what River Road really needs. I don't know. Just It was just the thought that crossed my mind. I'm 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 trying to hold off as much as possible until you know until we get a number from the state. I mean I'm hope I was hoping that we could get a number before town meeting, um, even though it's not ready for the governor's, you know, to sign it, and that's you know optimistically they said before Thanksgiving, but I still don't have a real feel on how much we're going to get, and that's the key to this. We need to have the flexibility if the road fails. You have to have be able to go out and do something. And to to Mark's point and to Jim's point, though, um, if the road fails in the winter, you know, when we had the problem with Route Two going out to North Adams, it was closed for six months. I mean, people just didn't travel that road, and this may be a reality that is going to happen with River Road if it fails. You can't fix it because you can't fix it, and um, you know so. Um, you know, I, Brenda's idea is interesting as well, possibly engaging an engineer to do preliminary engineering work. I mean, the rest of the engineering goes along with the project. Um, some of those engineering costs are built in for later that we wouldn't incur in an initial phase, but um, it's a conundrum. I, uh, yeah, it does yeah. feel like River Road is kind of a recurring problem. Yeah, it is. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, yeah. I'm so <laughs> about getting engineering for it. I just, I don't yeah. think that the old tricks are going to work going forward. I, right. I think that we need to get some engineering. I, I would be fine approving a reasonable amount, of, you know, 2.6 plus a, you know, contingency factor for any, you know, uh, stuff that's still coming in plus engineering, I think. 
Right. Um, I don't know if I would want to go much beyond that. I think doing the engineering now, though, would be a really good idea because then, you know, when we get into the spring, hopefully we'll have at least some preliminary engineering done. We'll know exactly what we need to do and um, have more precision with how much we think it'll cost. David, you had a comment. Uh, yeah, thanks, Julie. A um, cu couple things. One, um, I totally agree with this uh, engineering and looking at that now. My memory is that River Road was just redone not so long ago, um, or at least a huge part of it. And we really shouldn't be paying for these things twice. Uh, and I worry that we sort of have, have been doing a little bit of that. So the whole build back better idea is sort of should be a, seems like a primary focus. And I think the general consensus that I'm hearing is that whatever part of River Road this is, and I apologize, I can't totally visualize it. Everyone seems to be saying, at least the people in the know, that it's going to need to be done. Uh, some you know, weather event's gonna happen or something, it needs to be done, it needs to be done a lot better. And so I don't know if that's really true, I don't know why we wouldn't be really pushing to, um, in this borrowing that we're about to do, uh, do the engineering uh, work to get it done. And then my other thing is I'm a bit more on the sort of, um, if we know we're going to be doing this work, uh, why come back twice? And so I would I would certainly be much more receptive to a larger borrowing number here. My, my sense there was some feeling of the board uh, at our last meeting that well, if you have that borrowing authority, then it you know can get used for all kinds of things. Um, but it seems like there should be some way for us to be clear that we're using it for. I mean the projects that we've outlined here, the River Road project, whatever that is. And then, you know, any other, I suppose, major storm damage that occurs over the year. But I, I guess I'm, you know, we're not, uh, as, as everyone says, they're roads. Um, and so I guess I'm still confused about why it matters, whether it's 5 million um, or, and frankly, what I'm hearing is if it's two and a half, it's not enough anyway. And we and, and two from the last meeting is clearly not enough because we've already spent 2.6. Yeah. And we don't know what we're getting from the state. Um, so I'm, I'm still stuck on that, you know, you know, we, we should all trust each other that we're going to spend the money on, on the right stuff. And it's also not um, an approval to spend it yet. It's really just saying we need to be able to move quickly if we need to. So those are my thoughts. I'd, I'd like to point out that since we're already beyond two points, we're already at 2.6 million and are likely to go beyond, that kicks us up to, we'll say, 3 million. If engineering costs are going to be approximately 40%, uh, 20%, 40%, 40%, you said, of you know what's being spent, then that would be off of 5 million. That would be the other 2 million right there. So mm -hmm. I think we've already, you know, we've already, that the concern that there would be money borrowing authority that could be uh, essentially frittered away on other non-essentials, I think has kind of gone away because the essentials turn out to cost more than we thought. So do you have a motion for 5 million? Yeah, that's fine. <laughs> there is no motion, is there? All right, no I motion. move that we recommend the uh, $5 million amount. Do we have a second? Um, could I just ask again, just to clarify, what did the, there was some talk about the select board was also a little bit not, um, that was me, and I, I will go ahead and ask your question. And then well, you, that you weren't on the same page, but have you had a meeting yet where you've recommended or you're sort of coming to the boards requesting the five? I, I actually um, was recounting sort of historically, and I didn't express myself well. We, we did come down on five million um, as what we wanted to recommend. You did or didn't? We did. Okay, uh, so I'll, I'll second what? the motion then. Okay. Okay. So we have a motion and a second for five million. Is there any discussion? We did discuss at length, but give you time to percolate for a minute. <laughs> so just to be clear though, I, that 40% number, wouldn't that be engineering along the project plus permitting? Like I, I think the four, it's, to say it's 40% in engineering is, that's that's not the cost of the preliminary engineering, right? Like, wouldn't a design be far less than that? 
Um, in this case, not true because um, the permitting is going to be very expensive because it's a you know next to the Connecticut River, so yeah, it's Army get. Corps. Yeah, and you got to start that at the very beginning, and you you incorporate the permitting entities and the meetings and all that. the The cost is is an upfront cost. So if if one is designing, uh, redesigning a road, and it's not during a disaster. How, how does how does a municipality you know forecast the cost of that project before you get started? well in an emergency which is what we've been doing um generally you do not you do patch up work if you can do if it's straightforward it's done correctly but a lot of the work that we have done is temporary like i said it's not a final fix the money the 2.6 is um i would say lower road is probably correctly done they will not have to come back but we're gonna have to come back and revisit a lot of the repairs that we did there are not final repairs i guess what my question is though is like this this number still seems very nebulous to me yes, and yeah. um yeah. what my question is is if i want to build a new road um or or take a road that's not um in a spot where uh there's this big ominous winter coming and, you know, I'm confident that it's going to get through like the next year, let's say. How would I go about planning how much to ask for under normal conditions for engineering permitting and the actual road construction itself? Because, you know, I, I get that, you know, we we probably have some special permitting to do with um, the Connecticut River being right next to it. But I, I it just it I still like don't have a sense that we know we're um even in the right ballpark for this. Well, it's been, it's been my experience over the years that, and and lately it is about a hundred thousand dollars per foot. And it, that's for reconstruction, right? Reconstruction. So that's not for building like storm systems and- No, that's the total, pile. total. The that's total. for engineered culverts placed in the proper yep. spots, um, sized properly um, with down with downfield engineering so that the water doesn't tear up the uh, far side of the road yeah I, I i know it's a general amount but surprisingly it just seems like that that always ends up to be that about that much and and you're cutting away when you do emergency repairs your your the permitting the conservation commission is giving you permission to do the repairs without the permitting and without the engineering generally it's just the contract straight contract we have not hired engineers is that correct i don't think so i don't think so either uh, we've just been working with contractors on our repairs and that's why pine nook road is not a complete fix because the water is you know no no one address where the water is by the trestles it just dumps there it's a bottleneck no no one solved where the water so anytime you have excess water it's still going to go through the trestles mikey mikey and Tanellis's farm and then down to five and ten that has to be solved. That's an engineering solution. And that's why the brick grant we're doing, even though you look at, like you drive up there and you say, wow, this should work. The brick grant will address that we're applying for, will address the entire project as an engineering solution as what are we supposed to do? And um, that wasn't addressed at all. The, what we have done, the 2.6 million that we have spent already is addressing the fact that we're getting the roads to the situation so they can get through the winter. And then you have this three to five year period where we will be uh, applying for grants. There's multiple different grants. Like I said, initially, because River Road wasn't eligible for the EWP program, I thought, well, okay, we'll do Mass Works. We have successfully applied for a Mass Works project at the lower end of River Road. I know I could get Greenfield and Montague to support us, and and we we'll, we would end up. It's evacuation route. It's critical infrastructure for us as a town. I mean, you get your story together. We should be able to get a Mass Works grant, but that's eighteen to twenty four months out before we can, even if we got the grant, before we could put a shovel in the ground. So what I'm saying is I'm with the road dropping a foot in that in that rainstorm of three inches, I'm I'm just worried it's not going to get through the winter. This is my plan was to do this and move forward. 
and not cost the so town. So is the intent that if this is approved at town meeting in the election, then then what happens? Is the intent to go ahead and proceed forward with engineering now, or is it well, to I'm, wait and hope the thing holds together? And well, I'm just fails? having Kevin. Kevin has been really great. He's doing it on his phone, so there's documentation. We're just monitoring the road. I'm having him every time it rains. He's measuring it. And somebody's checking it when we have a rain. So we would wait. It sounds like what you're saying is that we would wait until we feel like we're an extremist. And at that point we would. Right. And at the same time, pursue grants or whatever. Right. To do this. otherwise. Right. But we're, we're going to the town meeting. We have a town meeting already. There's a warrant article already. Yeah. So that was that. why I want the five. Yeah, meeting. we get that. And then we can set up the election and hopefully we can cancel it and say, you know, hopefully the state will come through. Well, or we'll I'm, have an indication of the amount that the state is going to give us. I'm still confused though, because if if, if we're if the latest figure is 2.6 million, and it, you know, I guess just for a mental exercise, let's consider that the final dollar amounts, you know, three million. What are we going to do with two million dollars that three million didn't already do? Well, it would allow us to go out to bid for River Road. It would allow us to hire an engineering firm to give us some engineering direction. So it would the just bidding be process, the bidding million. process it by itself costs money. Yeah, I mean, the actual cost of the preliminary engineering would probably be, yes, lower. Um, and then there would be, um, when you actually get to the point where you've got some sort of engineered solution and you start getting permits, it would go up. Doesn't mean that the 5 million would be borrowed, but we don't really know that 2.6 million is all that we're going to spend because- That's my point. That's why yeah. I'm rounding up to three. No, right, right. Yeah. But I'm saying, we don't even know that three will do it. That's, you know. that's also my point. Right. So what so, are we going to do with the two million? You know, like we we don't have a plan still. Well, we have a, we have the ability if the state gives us some money. Say say we're asked. We've already asked the state for five million. This is what we need, right? Um, just to make our roads oh. travelable. Lower road. There's there are eight places, and even on Greenfield Road, there are places when you drive along it, you'll see that the state put riprap. That's not a permanent solution, but it's the solution that the state put in place. And and we have um, many many stretches of lower road where instead of a thirty five foot hole that washed out the whole roadway, there there are some substantial erosion uh, issues there, and they're they're going to need engineering solutions too. The solution we had on lower road for the big washout was to put in a sixty inch culvert because it was engineered for seventy five years ago when the water was passing through there, um, and it was done with metal that eroded and rotted and sank um, now we have you know a huge spigot of water can go through there at any time and it's unlikely to fail but we do all of our roads are under engineered there's no question about that so i understand mark you're thinking like an engineer and you're saying okay we don't even know the numbers um but to julie's point and to david's point um to go back three different times for the same issue is that a proper approach i don't know well um, I, I think so and, and the reason why i say that is i am an engineer not of the civil variety but th th that's why I'm, I'm i'm thinking like one well, yeah. and um but my question still is you, you're you, you guys are giving me a great examples of what we've had to do with other roads mm -hmm. but if this comes to be three million dollars in expenses that we've already taken on right what are we going to do with the other two million we don't have to spend it we don't have to spend it. The point is, this is up don't, to, borrow is good. Borrow up to, and if there's no real reason to spend the money, then why would any of us spend the money? Well, so what what, what you haven't said is we're going to spend two million on engineering, or we're going to spend two million on shoring up this one specific segment of River Road that is of highest priority. Like, I I want to give you guys money. Is, is really where I'm coming from. It's, it's the residents. And I want to give the town money. Yeah. But no one can tell me what we're going to do with the money that you're asking for. So I, the, I, that's I the can, problem I'm having. I can yeah. tell you that if River Road continues to fail at the rate it is failing, we will address it and we will be spending that money um, because the we have to fix it. So is what you're saying the remaining $2 million would be on emergency repairs? If, if River Road actually fails. It, it is in the process of failing. Okay. We are not clear on the rate. Right. And the reason why we haven't 
come and said, we're going to fix it. We haven't hired an engineering firm is because I am trying to find alternatives through grant programs that will pay for it. Okay. My concern and the reason why I'm here tonight is that I do not think it's going to go through the winter. This is just based on, you know, looking at it and, and what has happened every time it rains. I don't think that I agree with you. We're going to have lots of rain or precipitation of some sort. So that to me is why I'm here to say that it, the likelihood of it failing is going to happen. But we haven't spent any money on that because I don't want to commit town dollars when I don't have to. Mm -hmm. And that's exactly why you don't have I can't tell you exactly how much it's going to cost because we haven't expended any dollars yet. We've just had a ton of people come out and say, oh, yeah, a couple million bucks. You know, I can say that. I am telling you that yeah. just based on my experience. But we've had contractors say the same thing. This is going to be a big project if you rip everything out and rebuild it and rebuild it correctly. Yeah, which I think has to happen, right. which is why I'm right. like very concerned. But we you know, haven't yeah. done that because at the moment, you can still drive through there. We're monitoring it. Kevin, like I said, Kevin's out there all the time. The police, when we had that three inches of rain, the police are patrolling. And if, if it looked like it was dropping more than that foot, they would have closed the road. And, yeah. you know, I'm, I'm in con constant conversation with whoever is on duty when we have these rainstorms and they're checking our spots that we have notoriously have problems. So we're doing everything we can by not expending town dollars, but we need the flexibility if we have to. And that's, I guess that's what I'm asking for is just try. But I, and I honestly have a track record of not spending the town money. So I, you know, beat on tables. <laughs> Jim, you have a comment? I was going to move the question. It seems like we've sort of, at this point, sort of gotten to, everyone is sort of saying the same things that they've already said. Okay, I think we have to vote on that. So we mm. somebody's called to move the question. All those in favor of moving the question. Jim Cambius. James Cambius, aye. Beth Brown. Beth Brown, aye. Julie Chalfant, no. Mark Brennan. No. Dave Sharp. <laughs> You get to decide. <laughs> uh, are the no's because you have a few more comments? Or... I, mean, I mean, I'm happy to have, uh, I'm happy to do a no if we're talking about just a discussion. I'm saying no, because this is a lot of money. And I think oh, we should. No, ask. but that's, but we're moving the question. Right. We and just, just take discuss it a little further. Y you would like to? Yes. Okay. So I'm, I'm going to vote no. Dave Sharp, no. <laughs> Okay, um, Dave, do you do you have comments now? Um, I just just a, a, a I guess a question and a comment, Carolyn. Of the two point six million um, that has already been sort of expended for repairs, how much of that those repairs do you think are going to need to be redone because they were not engineered to sort of build back better and were more in the nature of an emergency repair? It's it's hard to say. Like I say, Pine Nook hasn't been solved. So we need to look at it from a whole, the whole concept. So do we need to rip out and rebuild what we put in? I do not think so, because I think the culverts are big enough, um, you know, down the road, but we haven't solved the bottom. So, so I'll, I'll it, it put it another way. So it's not really a finance, sorry. Oh, I was, so I was going to say yeah. of the 800,000 or whatever it was we spent at Pine Nook, I, I would say it's an additional amount of money versus starting oh. out from scratch. So this is obviously we're a finance committee. It's not really our position to say this, but I would just hope that we're really emphasizing now, given that we're sort of aware of the weather patterns, extreme events, that we aren't doing emergency repairs and that every repair, every time something goes out, it's really, we need to pause and, re-engineer it so that it doesn't happen again because spending the, the the kind of money that we're spending on this road stuff which we're not always guaranteed to get money back from the state is it seems like a lot of money and to spend it twice in a short periods of time would just really i think well not be of, fiscally responsible 
Right. And uh, but I, I want to reassure you what we've done, we've done, I don't think to be like repeated. It's it's yeah. Stayed, well, that's what I'm hoping. That's all I'm saying. Yeah. I just hope like it you know, to be open. It, it, well, like HUSAC, for instance, is not open. You keep saying that. I would right. hope that it's not just because we haven't gotten around to it. I would hope that we're when we do open it, we're really going to recognize yeah. that it's still a long term fix, whatever. The... I've been because because storm damage is not um, budgeted for climate change is not budgeted for. I have been on the cutting edge for the entire state and getting our town to do adaptation and mitigation versus just restoration. Restoration is not enough because the storm situations are definitely increasing. So every fix that I've been associated with has been upgraded and um, we push for the maximum amount of uh, that we allowed. After Irene, um, we created re creating resilient communities group. We adopted the roads and uh, standards of Vermont. Um, are we co connected with Vermont? And um, the state adopted those standards, which means that you're allowed an upfix, which was a huge thing that we the town of Deerfield never got any credit for, but it was a huge thing that happened. And as a result, you can go up at least 25% more increase, you know, when you have storm damage and stuff like that. It's 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 complicated, but the, the standard was increased. And we have been doing that um you know quite a bit. So I'm yeah. what I'm saying is that <clears throat> certainly aware of that. And but it was also we had so many roads that were closed. Um it we it was critical to get them open just so people can get to work, but also the emergency vehicles can get through. So the some of this work so had I to be think that there's no question that yeah. the work needs doing. Right. Um there is um by approving the five million um, for borrowing, you're putting the trust that we always put in the select board and the town to spend that appropriately um, and to move forward in a reasonable manner um, where we're doing a long-term fix, but also not spending too soon. Mm -hmm. um, are there other, do you have other comments, Mark? No. No. Do you have anything else? I just wanted to Beth. say. Hang on just a sec. Yeah, Beth, yeah. anything else? Um, did I miss when I was um, talking about how we're paying for the five? It will be borrowed, debt excluded. So it will have to go to an election to vote to debt excluded. So it would be, we did go through it's. And and then the hope is that at least some of it will be made up with some state grants, but those will not arrive for a considerable amount of time. <clears throat> yeah, and, and um, Julie put up a spreadsheet to show the effect on an average homeowner. Um, of the 5 million, which is similar. Yeah, it would be other average. Yeah. Which was very helpful. We did, yeah, we did look at that. Yep. We're hoping not to borrow, us, but I mean, I know, this, had something, I know this is your meeting. I don't don't mean to interrupt in your discussions, but I would like to say that we are asking the. I think Brenda pointed out it was four point seven million. We're asking the state for. Um, I think we should at least approach that number when we ask the town because th this is a number that we think. Is going to make our roads passable, you know, when, when all is said and done, all the money we've spent already. And then, um, so we go to the state and and uh, ask for $5 million, $4.7 million, but we're only asking our, you know, our town to give us the borrowing capability of $2 million. If they give us $2 million, half of what or half of what yeah. we're asking for, we're still going to be in a situation where that might not even cover what we've already spent. So, does it make sense to do 4.7 all around? Have the town, this thing match what you asked the state for, or does it matter? Brent is looking at me like I'm nuts. No, no I was thinking that was the same thing I was thinking. I was like, well, if that's what you're asking, then I would need to I, I think just 
five million. The, what what is also important is you're we're sending sending a message to the state that we're out on the hook. We're realizing that we're on this the hook for like five million. So that you need to give us five million. So. Um, yeah, I don't remember when we developed that four point seven million figure, but it was what you know. It was it a beginning. while ago. Yeah, yeah, it was a while ago. Yeah. It was like the first two weekends when we're sitting in emergency meetings coming up with these numbers. Is right. any further discussion? Uh, just a converse of what Carolyn said was the question I was wondering about. Is there any drawback to the state <clears throat> in, in the application that we've put in, knowing that we are saying we can borrow $5 million to pay for this? Does that hurt our chances with the application for these funds in any way? I, I don't think so. Um, only because it just it's convincing them them that we actually have this expenditures, and that's not actually. I mean, that's covering only the money that we're expending right now. We truly have more than ten million dollars worth of road damage, ten to fifteen probably by the time we get it fixed. So um, we had originally estimated eighteen, but some of the roads have come in a little bit less and we did so much work at Pine Nook that, you know, we're down, we're down under the emergency order, which eliminates some of the costs. And, but we, okay. we have, that's it. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you answer my question. Yep. <clears throat> Any further discussion in the finance committee? No, we'll do a roll call vote. Jim Cambius. James Cambius, aye. Beth Brown. This is for the five million. Okay. Yes. Okay. This is where we're at. Okay. This is making sure. Um, Beth Brown, I. Julie Chalpin, I. Mark Brennan. Uh, Mark Brennan, no. Dave Sharp. Dave Sharp, I. So that passes four one zero. All right. Um, so Casey, that'll change. Like I know this is posted already with finance committee up to two million, but when you do the the one that you hand out at town meeting, we'll change that. Yeah, it will change in the guide. Okay. All right. So the next article we're gonna discuss is the class comp plan. That is article four. Um Brenda, do you want to tell us what this is about? You said there was just one change, right? Yeah, that this was... is just just a revision to reflect the um, increased responsibilities for the assistant town clerk um, who has to operate as the town clerk in the absence of a town clerk. And so um, the personnel board has seen this, reviewed it and approved it. The select board has approved it, correct? Yes. Okay. Um, so it's moving the assistant town clerk from a grade C up to a grade E, which is um, in line with the assistant treasurer collector, basically the same same kind of responsibilities in the absence of the treasurer collector. Um, the uh, current assistant town clerk did go through the questionnaire, filled out the questionnaire according to the duties that, that um, she saw the assistant town clerk doing. We did review that and put um, a rating. Casey, what kind of a rating is that? Um, applied the rating to it, the rating that, that we use to determine where, where people land or where that position lands in the, in the uh, comp plan, which is where she ended up in grade E. So I know that's kind of a long, lengthy explanation, but basically moving moving the assistant town clerk from a grade C to a grade E. Got it. Any questions on that? I guess we could use a motion. Would anybody like to move that I'll, we recommend? I'll make that motion. Move to recommend uh, Article 4 as written. Second. Second. All right. Um, any discussion? Yeah. All right. Roll call. I thought you were about to say something. Roll call. Vote. I thought about it. But... We'll go the other way. Dave Sharp. Dave Sharp, aye. Mark Brennan. Mark Brennan, aye. Julie Chalpin, aye. Beth Brown. Beth Brown, aye. James Cambius, aye. All right. That's unanimous. Five zero zero. 
Um, let's try article six. So we'll, we'll close our meeting if you don't oh, mind. Okay. Um, Go ahead. And uh, first, I want to say thank you for spending so much of your time talking about that and moving that. I, th I thought it was important for the Finance Committee and the Select Board to be roughly on the same page, and I think we are, and I appreciate your consideration. So I will move to close the Select Board meeting. I will second that. All those in favor? Tim Hill, G.I. I. Carolyn, that's I. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I think there's two others that you might be interested in, Brenda, and then okay. uh, may or may not be, but <laughs> and then you'll be able to go to. So let's do Article Six, which is the um, Select Board Purchase Acquire Take by Eminent Domain the parcel of land, um, two point one acres. This is the. Are we allowed to say what? This is St. James Church. Yes. Yeah. Yep. So. So um, piece of piece of property that's adjacent to the library, correct? Right. Yeah. yeah. Just north um, of the library. Yeah. No, there's another there, house in between. Is there a no. house in between? There it, is. It, there it is, is a house in between, and then yeah, it, it wraps it around it. Okay. Yeah. But I think that is something important to keep in mind. That yes, those guys yep. would be surrounded. Yeah. <laughs> I would be sweating if I were that. Yeah. <laughs> Which is a shame because it's a lovely house. <laughs> Okay. So, oh, hey, you have a picture. Look at that. Oh. But it's like they're the one people who oppose the library construction that I can understand. Yeah, <laughs> I see. Yep. So it's part E right there. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's great. So, um, so at town, oh, sorry. Go ahead. Yeah. Okay. At town meeting, I feel like this came up. People were asking. Uh, this was what the someone was wanting. It, I think there, there was some there there was some discussion. I don't know if it, if they were talking about this specific property, but uh, the um, the uh, community preservation act funds that were dedicated to senior housing included the acquisition of property. Right. For the and senior this was that piece of property That's that they were talking about. Okay. They weren't ready to talk about it yet because there wasn't an appraisal. Right. Finished. Got it. Okay. So is there, it says eminent domain in here. Is this a friendly, go ahead, Casey. Okay. So I actually just had this conversation <laughs> yesterday. <Good. laughs> so eminent well, domain good. language, that language is actually required to be in the article. It always looks kind of scary to people, but the language is meant to convey the fact that if necessary, some of the some of the, and I don't, I'm not going to say this right, David. <laughs> um, some of the additional needs like easements and stuff, that's actually part of it. It just, you don't always need to do that, but you always have to have the language available in case you have to in a motion. The way I've heard it explained before is that if it's a friendly eminent domain, then you've agreed to the purchase price. If something comes up that hangs up that purchase, you can still proceed through eminent domain um, if necessary. But I just want to make sure that it's friendly, that this whoever owns it is interested in selling and all that. Go ahead, Casey. We have a signed offer to purchase from the owner. Okay. Good. Oh, okay. <laughs> Yes. In other words, I didn't have it at that. Like I hadn't had it returned. It was returned to me this afternoon. Yeah, I yeah. had talked to the person. I had a name, a number, and the number that you see is what's pu is published in the warrant. But I didn't have a signed offer to purchase. But I had a verbal, a verbal ac acquiescence to that, if you want to say it, or agreement. Okay. And this is so, you, as you brought up, this was voted at the last town meeting to use CPA funds um, for this purpose. So there's a designated, and it's already been voted once essentially. So this is not an this is not an additional expense. Either. No, it's not correct. The CPA funds cover this entire. Yeah, right. yeah. The uh, total authorization or appropriation was for five hundred and seventy-two thousand, which which includes this. Okay. Well, Any discussion? Do we have a, we don't have a motion, do we? I Anybody? move that we recommend article six as written. We have a second. Second. All right, we'll give it to Dave. <laughs> he was louder. 
um, any discussion? No, roll call vote. Dave Sharp. Dave Sharp, aye. Mark Brennan. Mark Brennan, abstain. Julie Chalfant, aye. Beth, Beth Brown, aye. James Camby is aye. All right, so that's four zero one that passes. Um, and the other one is Article 11, the roads that um, Snowberry Circle and Greylock Lane. Does anybody like to make a motion for this article? Yeah, this one makes perfect sense. I'll make a motion to uh, recommend Article 11 as written. We have a second. Second. All right. Um, so this will, and I assume this was the plan all along, but once we accept it, then we will have to maintain it and, um, plow it and whatever, all that stuff. Um, have you had any discussions with Kevin about that? I haven't, but maybe Casey has. Or I Casey? have. Yeah. Yes. We talked about that. Um, he didn't have a firm number as to what maybe a percentage that would be additional, but he does have plans in place to maintain this. And I would say that Kevin was was involved in much of the um, infrastructure uh, review as the as the roads and the development was being done. Okay. So he's familiar with it. That was my next question, whether he yep. had confidence that it was. I don't know, built properly yes, and built all to that the standards business. He does. And, yeah. Yeah, it was my understanding, I guess, correct me if I'm wrong, Casey, but it was my understanding that like this is the normal process for any kind of building development where the developer develops the road to the necessary spec and then the town initial the, the town eventually takes it over once all the different processes have been followed. So I believe this is the very end of that. Is that process. is that right? It didn't always happen that way, but yes, you're right, Mark. Yeah, uh, yeah I, Sorry, I would Julie. ask why this was being done, but Mark seems to have answered it. Any other discussion? No. Okay. Um, roll call vote. Jim, why don't you start? Uh, James Canby is aye. Beth Brown, aye. Julie Chalf and I. Mark Brennan, aye. Dave? Dave Sharp, aye. That's unanimous 500. Zero, zero. Okay. The rest is all zoning. So you want to take off? Yeah, that's um, okay. Let's start Thank with you. Article 5, which is fees for dogs. Um, do we have a motion? I move to accept Article 5 as written. Do you have a second? Second. Any discussion? Casey, do you have any like, um, it just went up five bucks, right? That's pretty much the change. We're getting rid I'm of- sorry. Um, article five for the dog licenses. Um, oh, yes. So it just went I'm up sorry, bucks. I was trying, that's what I was, I couldn't really hear what Beth said. So article five for the dog licenses, um, the main changes were, um, a $5 increase in fees mm -hmm. for both intact and spayed or neutered dogs, as well as a change to the fines for not licensing. And it says, I think, um, sorry, I always keep David's, it's funny. I think, I try to think like somebody might ask me a legal question, but so failure to license, um, is how it's framed in the license in the 186 one, which are the licensing fees. And that's really the penalty or the fine. Um, so that actually decreased and became staggered. So between May 1st and July 1st, there would be a $20 fine or late fee. After July 1st, it would be a $35 fine or late fee. Penalty, I guess we could call it. Okay. And then it looks like it's also adding um, no fees service, service in. And that's referenced in the old bylaw, but we actually took the language 
from that section of the general laws and in, and put that in and put it into our bylaws. Any discussion? It's a very weird sentence in that section. The final sentence, no license fee or portion thereof shall be refunded because of the death, loss, paying, or removal from the Commonwealth or other disposal of the dog. So it's not charging a fee, but it won't be refunded? It's ex it's the language from the law. I'm sorry, I James. Somebody, I can't explain it. <laughs> somebody tried to get a rebate? It seems like it would be a separate. For their dog Like dog? it should be item I instead of H, and it would yeah. say it applies to the whole thing, I, I would think, I but. Yeah. whatever but you know i didn't pay my ten dollars because it's a service dog but <laughs> i want my ten dollars back because my dog died that i didn't pay uh, all right and i don't know it doesn't i'm sorry james it doesn't always make sense to me when i read it but i actually councils reviewed this several times and that was the way it was in, it, it was written for the bylaw it doesn't make sense but the lawyer approved it i'm sorry <laughs> Sorry, David. <laughs> what wasn't me? I know it wasn't you. It was sort of a combination of the legislature and right, council. Let's, let's go on. Um, any other discussion on the the article besides that nonsensical sentence? No. Okay. Let's do roll call vote. Jim, why don't you start? Uh, James Camby is I. Beth Brown, I. Julie Chalf and I. Mark Brennan, I. Dave Sharp, I. All right, that's unanimous five zero zero. Article six, we already did. Article seven um, is a big mishmash of stuff throughout the zoning bylaws. Um, you all got, yeah, I emailed that out a couple days ago. Um, anybody have? So my question is, is this going to have any financial impact at all? Do, is this even our business? Um, I, I think it does, um, somewhat peripherally. But, I, but I'm in favor of anything that makes the zoning bylaws clearer and easier to comply with, because I think that encourages people to come to town and build in town probably reduces um, our legal expenses and reduces the yeah um so actually i had a couple questions but i just wrote down the section number of what it was um one question I had, Casey, section 4312 says the town administrator is going to be the floodplain administrator. Am I on the right, right section? No, is it, um, if it's in floodplain, right? Oh, that that's in the different. So it's actually, it what they did, let me just explain why we have three articles. Um, the main zoning article really addresses inconsistencies um, clerical that sort of thing clerical mistakes right but they separated and, and you'll note that floodplain and conservation subdivision okay are part oh, of the main yeah. bylaw but they separated out into three sections in case for instance if the main zoning which is article seven i think if that main zoning bylaw fails we have the opportunity to address conservation subdivision and floodplain because in conservation subdivision and floodplain there's state and federal requirements that we have to meet and floodplain actually has that reference to town administrator doing certain things and i had a conversation with the uh, planner up at the cog because i questioned it myself and her advice was to have a it first of all it has to be a staff member second that staff member should have some connectivity to various departments and the ability to have some authority over signing certain things like applications and that sort of thing and reporting back to various um, state and federal agencies. So her suggestion was the town administrator. And after she discussed it with me, I understood it better. Is this something that you can delegate in any way? Can you, you can, you can also coordinate it between departments. 
Okay, so you that's could one like of the, the planner or the assistant it. town administrator to uh, to correct assist with this. Okay. Yep, you can delegate it. You can also make sure it gets coordinated through delegation. On um, so so on the one we're actually talking about, um, section twenty one ten, where we're talking about the different overlays. Um, here, let me share this. Oh, so it looks like to me like this list right here doesn't match this entirely. So like this says water protection overlay district, but it should say watershed probably. Um, and then the, the adult use overlay district isn't, oh no, it is. Marijuana, mar no? All right, never mind. Well, the water side is Yeah. Oh, wireless, wireless is, I knew something was correct. Whatever, this list doesn't match this list. If that's okay, then that's okay. But... There are certain corrections in there. Um, and I have to say, Julie, I can't speak to every detail, okay. but I did have a conversation with the planning chair yesterday afternoon, and we discussed how she was going to prep people during town meeting for this. And that may go into the guide where there's a um, essentially talking points. And so for what you just said, I want to type that. I want to write that down so she and I can talk about that. Um, okay. Yeah, because it says water protection. So it says, yeah, watershed. water protection. It should say watershed. And then the like floodplain overlay is not listed and wireless communications overlay is not listed. Oh yeah, it is. Whatever. It it doesn't quite match. <laughs> I can't do it sitting here looking at it. But so you're saying watershed, it's water protection should be watershed. Yes. And that's the thing. I haven't looked at every single detail. I looked there were certain things that I made comments about before they had the hearing, but not that. And then floodplain is not listed in that little list. I think that's the other problem. And maybe that's okay. Maybe it's somewhere else, but. Does anybody else have comments or questions on this? I do. Um, I think 3660 is a little too heavy handed, um, you know, with pretty much all of Deerfield having, you know, either be like a wetland or floodplain or have a lot of water. I, I could see uh, certain residents, let's say on lower road um, or maybe even upper road, people who have like a uh, substantial part of their parcel um, have uh, an incline like they're talking about, uh, coupled with um, a house in a driveway not even being able to you know put up a shed under this new um this new number that that they're proposing here it's going up from uh 20 percent to 50 percent so i think like on paper this probably sounds very reasonable if you've got a uh, a level um plot of land but i i think this could put a you know a potential financial burden on on people who you know, might not be able to uh, without some was, crappy. Yeah, I, I wrote that down. So that's actually not the article we're talking about right now. Oh, oh, but, sorry. Is it? Um, it's not. Are no. We on seven. We're on seven. That's article. I don't know what. Oh, because this says section thirty six hundred. If I'm on the wrong one, I apologize. Okay. No. So article eight. Oh, updates 3,600 entirely. So, right, article so I'll save seven. my comments for that. For yeah, so though. let's save that because that sure. I have the same question. Anything okay. else on article seven? Is this the one that had the landscaping one on it? 
Uh, oh yeah, it was. Landscaping <laughs> is part of our is all is part of all of the the entire chapter one seventy nine zoning. There's landscaping throughout in various okay. ways areas. Uh, the native flowering planting plan with pollinators around PV arrays. Why? Some of these changes were in place before when we did site plan review, change or site plan um, review application. That section, which is site plan, they had done that as part of their climate resiliency work that Carolyn mentioned before. She had mentioned some conservation and climate resiliency work. There were changes to the bylaws that have been made over the past couple years that included some of what you're questioning. Yeah, it's kind of the same. Doesn't, doesn't this get back to what our role is here on the Finance Committee yeah. relating to these things? I, I mean, we can m move our own motions to amend if we don't like it at town meeting. But in terms of our Finance Committee, you know, is it? Well, I, I did just think of a financial yeah. uh, role for this. Do any of these impose additional restrictions beyond what federal and state requirements elsewhere do? In other words, does this advantage or disadvantage Deerfield in any way compared to, I don't know, Waitley? Are you asking me as a person or a town administrator? Is that rhetorical? <laughs> no, it's not rhetorical. I mean, it's, it's an not honest rhetorical. Question. It's an informational yeah. question. Does this You're right. It's an honest question. Yeah. Um, there are some limitations, especially in site plan, that do create more costs, I think, if you're developing. I mean, if you're, it depends on what you're doing. Um, but the last couple times I've observed some of these things come through, it requires more engineering. So there could be more costs on the part of an applicant. Um, and certainly changes that might happen because stormwater is related to some of that site plan stuff um, could be more expensive. It's just an observation as a person. I'm not criticizing anything that finance or I'm sorry, criticizing anything that planning board has submitted for changes. I'm just saying that I've seen some additional costs that have happened because of these changes. Any other comments or discussion? So, so what I was sitting here thinking is that there's nothing in here. There's a couple little things that have been sort of snuck in like the landscape plan and the pollinator stuff around the PV arrays or whatever that are, I, I, I agree, I think are additional costs that are um, slightly negative in getting people to come to town. Um, I, I don't really feel like it's a huge, this is just my personal opinion, it's a huge financial, it's a big finance committee issue. Um, and that I, I, I'm kind of feeling like I, I don't really, it's not that I don't care, but I don't really care either way. Like, I don't feel like the finance committee needs to make a big stand on this article for any reason in one direction or the other. So I would be happy enough with just saying politely that we don't care. Um, like, not that we don't care, but we always care. But I'd be happy with that too. Is that, do we have a motion? We don't have a motion. Would anybody like to word that right. um, more politically correctly? I move so, that the finance committee make no recommendation about this article. Second. Okay. Any discussion on that? Um, sure. Is, is this the beginning of a new policy that we should think about? Like, are we trying to make um, judgments about certain articles that really don't have a financial impact? And in fact, we should have a new category of sort of being agnostic about certain things? So that's been a long standing. We've done that. For a couple of years. Done what? The take no position? He had said, we have looked at articles and said there is no um, financial okay. impact. Good. The finance committee does not make a great uh, example. It's not making a recommendation. A, a great example was the motion about wh whether the town of Deerfield would approve the change, would, would, would approve changing the state flag 
And I think our position was, we don't care. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. No, I just want to make sure that we've been doing those kind of things. And, yeah. yeah. Uh, okay. Sounds great. Yeah. Okay. So we have a motion and a second that the finance committee make no recommendation on this article. Any further discussion? Uh, one quick question. We're not, these new changes, no, they're not causing any new hires or anything, right? That would be obviously a financial issue, but really not. Any new what? New hires. Oh, new people. Yes, no. Point. Yeah. Okay. I yeah. So. I didn't see anything that jumped out at me. Well, we've already got people who need to enforce all these things. And yeah. Okay. Um, Thanks. Any other discussion? Um, let's start here, Jim. Uh, James can be as I. Julie Chauvin and I. Mark Brennan, I. Ip Sharp, I. All right, that passes 400. All right, Article 8. Now we can talk about 50%. Um, so this is the conservation subdivision design for open space protection. Um, Mark, do you want to? say your comment yeah i just i think it's heavy-handed and you know I, I i know that for zoning stuff there's probably a gut reaction of you know does this really belong you know being discussed here and i i would say that you know we think at least partially have a duty to look out for the financial interests of the people in town and yeah. i i think I for that reason that this is a little heavy-handed and um that's a piece that i would either recommend that uh you know we leave recommend to leave out or you know have one of us just amend on the floor um amending on the floor i don't like doing but i have done in the past but it just it seems cheap so yeah I, I read it and my first thought was is there any carrot in here or is it all stick you know it seems like why would anyone voluntarily want to do a a um, conservation subdivision rather than just a normal property development you know, it seems like you're just adding problems for yourself. Is there any, does it grant you any rights or development privileges that you would otherwise not have? Like, can you develop in what would otherwise be a sensitive area with a conservation subdivision design that otherwise you would not be able to build in at all? Are there any subdivisions that aren't conservation subdivisions? I can't honestly answer that question. I do know that functionally, most subdivisions have to go through a permitting process that's fairly significant because both Conservation Commission and the Planning Board in their, in their authority over stormwater, it requires quite a bit of work and there are some costs associated that are higher than you might think. But that's just me observing, James, not with any real concrete data. So you could do a, you could have a subdivision that doesn't fall under this. A conservation subdivision is a different kind of subdivision. Is that true? I think so, but... That's actually something I'd like an answer for. I'm going to ask Denise to watch this so that she can answer some of these questions because I think I wish I had been able to get Denise to the meeting, but I couldn't. Denise is the chair of the planning board. Sorry. Okay. Mm -hmm. Because I think she could answer some of this a little bit better than I can because I really, this wasn't my project. This was really planning board's attempt to, you know, create some consistency, but also make changes that they thought needed to be made or that were recommended by the planner up at the COG. Well, I mean, you know, reading it's um, section 3620, you know, it's um, applicability is, you know, any creation of five <laughs> lots, blah, 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 may proceed under this section 3600 pursuant to the site review plan review process. Um, but it doesn't say it must. So it seems like this is optional, but it seems like it's an option that adds a lot of requirements, but doesn't seem to. I, again, I was just wondering, is there any reason why one would want to do that? Is there any care? It says you can do site plan review rather than a special permit. Uh, do you know what that means? So. Yeah. 
let me back up to an experience the town had when we were working on the park project we had a combination of site plan review special permit and stormwater if you allow a subdivision to go through without or or optionally use this section that doesn't require site plan review and special permit I would I would think there's and I know there's different requirements for or certain requirements that fall within both those categories. Um, perhaps not having to do a special permit, but just go through site plan review eliminates a category of, of requirements. I'm not positive. So, so, that, so that following the requirements of the the conservation subdivision design means that you don't need a special permit as long as you do a site plan review. Right. That's how it reads to me, but I'm not a lawyer and I'm not a building commissioner or zoning officer. I don't feel like I have enough information to recommend anything for this one, uh, aside from just doing what we did on the last one or holding off on voting on this until a later time. I had the same reaction to the 50% because it's not just 50% of the land. It's 50% of the land in addition to, like you exclude the steep stuff and the wetlands and all that. And the stuff that's left, you have to say 50% of that. Yeah. So you're like. And that wipes out like a lot of the lots. A lot of the which, land. Which subsection is that in? Is that 3660? <clears throat> Is 36. Excluding inquiry. 36. 50. 36.5% or greater. I'd like to see those steeper than 25% slopes. <laughs> Somebody build on that. Is uh, this I'm, I'm, I'm just um, not sure if I'm looking at the right thing, but the chapter 179 proposed zoning revisions, is that what we're talking about? No. So there's. You're, you're muted, Casey, yeah. if you're talking to us. It's this. If you look on the website, um, oh. it's a conservation subdivision. All of this stuff is on the website, too. David, um, it's the separate one that's conservation subdivision design. It's about well, I'm looking at conservation feet. subdivision design within the chapter 179 that you sent us a while ago, and I'm just not seeing a lot of red ink in there. Yeah, that's because that... they separated it out. So I okay, so I apologize. I can't really participate there. I don't know what red ink. Which parts we're talking about? Here. I mean, I'm seeing it, but I'm just not seeing a lot of changes. Okay. Here's the piece with the changes. So what they did, David, there's chapter 179, and then they didn't do this piece in 179. There's a separate article that addresses this piece. Because it's significant changes and not just touching up. Yeah. Grammar. Okay. All right. All the red ink is in the separate, like four or five pages, David. Yeah. So with that, I'm, I'm kind of where you are without planning board here, able to discuss it. Um, I don't feel like. Can we just make a motion to not? I don't. I can't remember how you put it on the last one. Oh, oh, to not recommend. I was going to say either to not make recommend, no recommendation. Leave no recommendation, and then if we can meet with the planning board, then maybe make a new recommendation, other than tabling it. Or or so we could just not vote. We have we have no motion right now. We could just not do anything, oh, and it would okay. say nothing about finance committee, and. You can just skip it. Yeah, yeah, but what? Yeah, whatever. I guess non-committal path we choose. I, I'm I'm in camp non-committal <laughs> on this one until I get more information. I like that. Yeah. Okay. No motion was made. 
do you guys want to see if we can schedule a time to meet with the planning board to discuss these things between now and town meeting? Uh, yeah, that would if be great. we can come up with a time. It's yeah, gotten it closed, but yeah. Okay, we'll try and do that. Because I like you know I my my initial reaction is this is kind of heavy handed, but I want to see if there's a logical reason for it. Maybe it was, maybe there is. Maybe it was copy and pasted from another town. Um, I don't know. But I, mean, I mean, it's go ahead, Dave. Isn't this a provision that's you know, like giving people um, a tax benefit for for preserving a certain amount of the land in their subdivision? Oh. I mean, if if How about that. Oh yeah. yeah. If I mean, if that's the purpose of it, then I think then obviously, All right. yeah, there's probably a reason behind the restrictions to people have to follow to be able to take it. I mean, if we're if it, where's a town, I'm going to subsidize certain developments for people so they get a lower tax rate <clears throat> seem, seem, seems like those conservation restrictions would be um as part of the trade-off yeah yeah and it is labeled conservation subdivision yeah. so you have to conserve something if you want to be there yeah, yeah that, okay that makes more sense yeah no. I, I hadn't thought of that but no i think it's land that's already being taxed at a better rate right yeah but it doesn't say that anywhere in this mm -hmm. bylaw I don't know if it's associated with that. That's a good question. Yeah. Or either the chair of the planning board or the planning board. Um, yeah. Do you okay. want me to to let Denise know that you want to discuss it more with them, with you, with somebody? I can just, I'll more? reach out to her. Okay. Let's see. Yeah. <laughs> um. Okay. So does anybody want to make a motion on this now? I'm hoping nobody says yes, but. <laughs> okay, we're gonna move on then. Um, and then the other, the next one is article nine. So this does have a financial impact folks. And the reason they separated this out, there are federal and state requirements the town does not meet in its zoning. So the major changes in this address that. But the importance of the article is if we don't make these changes and meet the federal and state requirements, it could jeopardize all the residents' um, ability to protect their property if they require flood insurance. Are you going to have a map that you can show at town meeting that shows where the floodplain stuff mm -hmm. is? I would say no, because the floodplain maps date from the 1970s. Okay. because We don't online. have the ability, unless somebody gives me something electronic, I don't think we have the ability to actually show that. They're on paper. We okay. are two years out from new floodplain maps from the federal government. So right now, we don't know who this affects, right? No property. We know we have old maps. Affects, People can look their their land up on the old maps, but we don't have electronic versions that show that. Because I went to the state website trying to find where it was in Deerfield, and um, I could find floodplain areas in like Amherst and eastern part of the state and stuff, and there was nothing in Deerfield on the state website. My understanding is we are the last county to be addressed. <laughs> uh... And I specifically asked Peggy at the COG when we could expect them. And I, 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 I got a facial expression. <laughs> um, she's, she's the one that told me basically we're two years out. Um, I can ask her if there's something that's available, but I don't know because I, I know that those maps exist on paper. Okay. So section 43, you're not going to be able to answer this, but um, 4307, wherever that is, there was no grandfather in it. Uh, let me find this. Sorry, I just pulled it up. Let me look at it. 43 what? 4307. says the following uses are permitted provided they do not require structures and then you deleted the barns or farm related structures and ag, ag uses and you but we crossed out buildings lawfully existing prior to the adoption of these provisions 
It so would appear that, that way. Mean that if there's a building there that prior existed, it has to be taken down? I don't know. That is a good question. I didn't ask that question. I probably should have, but I didn't. When I was looking at it, I didn't ask that question. Okay. And it may be if, so the hearing, I don't know how many people attended the hearing, which was on the second. Um, I know that we have a recording of it. I don't know if it addresses those questions. Um, to your point about meeting with planning board, um, they may be able to, and I'm pretty sure they can answer that or Denise can answer that. It's just, I didn't ask that question. On the face of it, it looks kind of scary though. I can see from your perspective, Julie. Anybody else have anything we need to talk about about this article right now with no planning board present? There is. No. No. Well, there is a little something under 4309A, which kind of compensates for that about any agricultural structure or accessory structure used for agricultural purposes which is erected or, yeah. uh, in accordance with FEMA policy, blah, 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 as may be amended, shall be permitted by right. Yeah, so I think I think ag is okay. But the way I read that line F, buildings are lawfully existing prior to the adoption. It, it, so it wouldn't be ag, but there could be some other building oh, I see. that yes. was there. I don't know. Like the sewer plant or something. I don't know. Or, but... you're built again. Or... Yeah, yeah, exactly. I, I I thought we did this like two years ago and had a map. Because didn't we have a zoning change where we were talking about like an area by frontier, you know, but along Bloody Brook? Didn't we vote on that at one of the town meetings recently? Yes. They what... did make changes to the floodplain. And I want to say it was 2021, but don't quote me. Yeah, you that sounds about right, actually. Yeah. And I thought we had some sort of map for that, but, um, and, and I thought the purpose of that motion that we voted on was to to bring things in line um, with uh, federal and state requirements. So it just kind of almost feels like we've done this already, but yeah. To some extent you have. Some of, some of the floodplain changes addressed concerns that were outstanding that related to climate stuff. But th in this case, they really sat down with the planner and had her review it and tell them exactly what language needed to be included. And so that's part of what you see. Also, what you see is stuff that planning board wanted to see addressed, I think. Okay. That's my understanding. I think we should just chat with them. Yeah, I think so too. Okay. Um, that I think takes us through everything um let's quickly do you guys have your schedules with you yeah. can we pick a couple dates that would work for us and then i'll reach out to denise and see when they can come i'm not sharing my calendar again um so it needs to be what's today wednesday wednesday so we need 48 hours in advance so the soonest it could be would be next week monday night so I can do any day next week. You can do Tuesday because there's another CCI. There's CCI. We could do it early before C. Oh, no, but Denise had something else that she had to do, so she definitely won't be able yeah, to. Yeah, she moved that to be later. Right. I can't do Wednesday after 6. I and there's think a that... select board meeting then anyway. Oh, good. Oh, but we could do early. We do like 5. I don't think this will take long. Right. We have okay. a couple specific questions and we could just do it by Zoom. Oh, that's true. Yeah. In other words, just a remote meeting. Yeah. Um, Friday is kind of a bad evening for me as well. I have a prior commitment. That's not too Friday. At seven. So we could Monday. Does Monday work for everybody? Actually, Monday works well for me. Monday would be fine. Okay. Monday uh, be good if it's at five because there's a personnel at six. Yeah, we have personnel at six. <laughs> Let me check the schedule too, Julie. Give me one second of what's on okay. our um, current accounts. It'd be okay. incentive to move briskly. 
Yeah. And then Wednesday also we could do early like 5 p.m. or something before mm -hmm. select board. But Monday's preferred. Is that what I'm hearing? For me, yeah. Okay. I have no difference for either between you. Okay. Um Double check. Casey, Monday, we only have personnel, so far as I can tell, Julie. Okay. Um, like David said, we have a six o'clock personnel board meeting, but. But if we did this at like five and we're done by 5.15. Yeah. Five, it's five David that has, so we only have quorum if David shows up to personnel. Okay. That's so one we, of the reasons he said that. Sure. I actually don't think, we, we just have a couple questions. I don't think it'll take. A harness amount of time. Okay. And we would so have Monday to post by tomorrow. Wednesday at five, both work for you, Casey. Monday or Wednesday at five? Yeah. Uh, Monday. Preferred. Mark, what about Wednesday for Capital? We could do Capital Wednesday at five. That's I, the I thing. If you're going to talk to planning, you can't be at a finance committee meeting if you've got a Capital meeting. Yeah. Yeah. Same as David with personnel. Okay. So we'll try we just need to five. adjust whatever you guys decide. I'll we'll have to figure it out. Okay. Monday. At Go five. with it, Julie, and see what they say. Okay. We'll try that. All right. That's everything. Anybody want to move to adjourn? Motion to adjourn. Second. Second. Jim, why don't you start? James can be as I. Julie Schaup and I. Mark Brennan and I. Dave Schaup, bye. All Thank right, you. we're done. Four zero zero. Thank you, everybody.